السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد ونستعین ونستغفر ونعود بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله في سوره الاحزاب اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم النبي اولى بالمؤمنين من انفسهم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن احدكم حتى اكون احب اليه من والده وولده والناس اجمعين او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب العالمين As we all know this is our first session for the life of the prophet peace be upon him the seera of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Inshallah in today's session we will learn the importance of studying the life of the prophet peace be upon him the purpose of learning more about the life and the events of the prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-ahzab An-nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim An-nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim Which means that the Prophet peace be upon him is prior or is more important for the believers than their own selves An-nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim An-nabiyyu awla means the Prophet, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awla means his prior, his before, his more important Bil mu'minin for the believers So the Prophet peace be upon him is prior, is more important for the believers Min anfusihim Then their own lives The Prophet peace be upon him is more important for the believers than their own selves, than their own lives. Now I think we should ponder about for on these words for a while because uh, it's easy to say uh, these extravagant words in in love, in in our affection for someone. We would easily say that we love someone more than our own selves more than our own lives and we hear these kind of words and sentences a lot in human literature in our movies etc but it's important to know that who is saying that it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed his final word quran e hakim and it's a verse of quran e hakim and it has been revealed to prophet muhammad peace be upon him and this verse among all the verses of quran e hakim has been saved for the whole of humanity to come and read it again and again so it's it, these are very important words allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying an nabiyyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim that the prophet peace be upon him is more important for the believers than their own lives the prophet peace be upon him is prior is prior to for the believers than their own selves the believers put prophet peace be upon him before their own selves before the before they think about their own good they think for the prophet peace be upon him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it is very important for us to check ourselves is it how we feel about prophet muhammad peace be upon him do we keep prophet muhammad peace be upon him prior to our own selves in essence what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually saying in this verse is that this is what believers should do this is what the believers must Uh, must have as a priority in their lives allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about mu'minin an nabiyyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim and if if we check our own selves and we, and we find that we think about ourselves a lot we care about us a lot but we don't think that much about the prophet peace be upon him then actually we are not at that level of belief that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is what believers must have as their priority. And if they don't have, then they are not at that level of belief that is required. This is confirmed, this understanding is confirmed by a saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as narrated by Imam al-Bukhari in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, لا يؤمن أحدكم None of you truly believes. None of you truly believes. حتى أكون أحب إليه Until and unless I am more beloved to him. None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him. من والده Then your own father. وَوَلَدِهِ Then your own sons. وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ And then the whole of humanity. So Prophet peace be upon him is saying that none of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his own father, than his own son, than the whole of humanity. Whoever we love in our life, whether it's our own life, whether it's our own selves, whether it's our father, our son, our spouses, our mothers, and our neighbors, and our family, and our friends. Whoever are the human beings that we love, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that you will have to learn to love your Prophet, peace be upon him, more than them. And if you don't have that, if you don't have that love for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, is saying that your Iman is incomplete. So today we have learned one verse of Surah Ahzab and one hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari. Both are pointing to the same direction. That Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has to be loved by the believers more than their own lives and more than the whole of humanity. No human being should be more beloved to us than the Prophet, peace be upon him. So this is clear. This is a problem. This is a situation, problem, because we have to ask ourselves, do we love the Prophet, peace be upon him, that much? And if we don't, we have to do something about it. And one of the situations where this will be, uh, where we can understand the importance of this concept quite clearly, is in the grave, is in the grave. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when a human being is buried in his grave, two angels come and ask him three questions. One question is, who is your God? The second question is, do you recognize this man? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, alluded to the situation that they will show the Prophet, peace be upon him. Or they will ask about the Prophet, peace be upon him, that do you know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the third question is, what is your deen? So the second question is, who is this man? You see, every human being, after the Prophet, peace be upon him, from among the ummati of the Prophet, peace be upon him, will be asked this question about the Prophet, peace be upon him, that do you know him? This is how important this man Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has to be in our lives. Our life depends on it. One of the great Islamic scholars, Hazrat Maulana Idris Kandelvi rahimahullah, in his seerah, seerat mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is a, a book of three volumes, and it is a very exquisite book, and a very authentic book. Inshallah, in, in uh, these sessions, we will be uh, taking a lot from that book. Hazrat Maulana Idris Kandelvi Rahimahullah has said in the beginning, in the introduction of the book, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made this fact, that has made it obligatory for the mu'mineen, for the believers, to know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, more than they have to know their own selves. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory for all believers 
to love Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, to know about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him because they will be asked about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in the graves and if they could not answer that question it will have very grave consequences in the grave and in the hereafter. So they must know about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So Hazrat Maulana Idris Kandelvi Rahimahullah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory for mu'mineen to know Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him more than the believers are required to know themselves. If a mu'min does not know himself that much, that would not harm him in the hereafter and in the grave and in this life as well. But if he does not know Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, that will cost him a lot in this life, in grave and in the hereafter. And these two things are limit, uh, are related, loving someone and knowing someone. As we know that in this our times, when we do not have Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him among ourselves, the Prophet peace be upon him is in his grave in Medina. We are not in at the times of the Prophet peace be upon him, so we can meet him, we can talk to him. This is not what we can do. But still, the requirement of loving Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him remains for us and will remain till the last man who comes in, in this planet. As the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is last Nabi, is last Prophet and he is the Prophet of all human beings. So the requirement is the same. We have to love him. Therefore, in order to love the Prophet peace be upon him, we have to get close to him. We have to know more about him. This is the first and foremost purpose and reason for us to learn about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is the importance of this topic, Seerah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which we learn about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his life. So, today we have learned the importance of loving Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and this, why is this a reason for learning Seerah? Uh, his life. Second very important reason for learning Sirah and learning about the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is that it helps us to understand Quran e Hakim. It helps us to understand the word of Allah, Quran. And this is another requirement for all believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran e Hakim as guidance for the mankind and those who believe in Quran e Hakim must read it, must understand it, must try to live their lives according to Quran e Hakim. However, in order to learn Quran e Hakim, we have to learn few other things as well. For example, we might have to learn some of the Arabic and we might have to learn uh, some other books uh, of Safasir uh, of Quran e Hakim. But one clear tool to understand Quran e Hakim is to know about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And how these two are related is very clear. As we know that Quran e Hakim is revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Quran e Hakim is a revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Jibreel alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then chose in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his message to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him through Jibreel alayhi salam. And then Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, once he received that message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has delivered us the message. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a message for us, for you and uh, for you and for me, which is quran e Hakim. It is a message. It is the last message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a very important message from the creator of us. From, from the one who created us. He wants us to know some very important things about this life, about the hereafter. However, the chain is very important. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the one who is delivering the message. So it is very important for us to know the messenger as well in order to understand the message. And this fact has been discussed in Quran-e-Hakim in quite a lot of verses. Because 
when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam preached uh, the people in Mecca, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa taala has made him a messenger in order to give mankind a message, the f uh, one of the criticisms on the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, one of the questions that has been raised again and again is that you are a human being. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala select a human being to deliver the message when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have selected an angel or some other being? Why did he have to select a human being? Because in their, in their mind, human being is a very lesser being than, uh, than the angels. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can use angels to give messages, why did he select a human being? This was a question that was repeated again and again as a criticism to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, believers and Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replied to that question in a lot of verses in Quran Hakim. And the essence of that reply is, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Bani Israel that if there were angels living in earth, living uh, in the world, mutma in neen, if, if uh, the world was uh, populated by angels who were living here and uh, 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 who, who were basically uh, doing all of the stuff that the human beings do, that is the general living, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then would have sent an angel as a prophet. Which means that because the world is populated by human beings, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected a human being to give them the message. If the world was populated by angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have sent an angel as a messenger. So the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected a human being to give human beings message is because of the, the type of the message. The message the quran hakim is basically a guide of how human beings should live their life. It is a guide of how we should live our life. Which things should be more important for us? How we should react to situations coming up daily? For example, how we should, how we should control our anger? How we should control our lust? How we should take care of our needs? How we should behave with other human beings? How should our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are all life lessons. This is not a concept that some angel can uh, come and give to human beings in their minds. It is basically a life. The reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected a human being to give message is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show human beings what is an ideal human being, what is an ideal abd, what is an ideal person, a slave of Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants human beings to live their life. So for that, for that message, a human being was needed who would live that life, who would live the perfect life perfect life as is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to fitra according to the nature Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and when Allah created us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created us in a in a particular way and wanted us to leave the lead our lives in that particular way there is a particular way of living life a life of purity a life of chastity gave him further guidance or uh, of how to get even more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then how to lead life then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that man Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, 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 different kind of trials how to live life in hardships and how to live life in happiness as well and how to how to be a good father how to be a good husband how to be a good neighbor how to be a good head of the state, how to be a good uh, leader of an army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to guide human beings through a human being. And this is what Quran-e-Hakim is. 
قرآن حکیم is the guidance and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is a practical application of that guidance. This is what we understand from from a narration by Hazrat uh, Ummul Mu'mineen Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha after the Prophet peace be upon him passed away one of the companions came uh, to uh, the mother uh, of the Mu'mineen Ummul Mu'mineen Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha he came uh, to her and asked her about the character of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him about the life and the nature and the character of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. To the mother of nation, uh, Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha replied that haven't you studied Quran Hakim? Kana khuluquhul Quran that the khuluq, that the akhlaq, that the character and nature of the Prophet peace be upon him is Quran. The character the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is Quran. Whatever are the teachings of the Quran, the highest level of that teaching, the highest uh, grade of that teaching, the perfect application of Quran e Hakim is the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, this is the second reason of why we have to learn more about the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him because this is needed in order to understand the message in order to understand the message you must understand the messenger you must be close you must uh, be, have a clear understanding of the life of the messenger why is this important why do we have to learn about the messenger in order to understand the message this is a very important question and it is important because of uh, different perspectives that we find nowadays. Uh, some people say that there is no need to learn about the messenger. What you need to do is just learn the message. Just learn the Quran. Don't worry about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His life, his sayings, his beliefs, his character, that is not important. Na'uzubillah, that's what they say. And they say that the message is important, only the Quran is important. And they give, a, uh, give an example of a postman. And they say that if someone sends you a message, a letter, through a postman, through a messenger, you take that letter and that uh, the postman and the messenger just goes away. And then you read the letter and you understand it and follow it. So they say that it, it is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us Quran. And the postman or the messenger in this example would be Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So they say that it is not important to follow the messenger as well. The task for the messenger was only to give you that letter, to give you Quran and Hakim and then go away. You don't have to follow him, you don't have to go behind him, you don't have to learn anything more about uh, that man, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is what some people have been saying, have been propagating. And the another problem that these people have is that uh, the locality of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was a particular person in a particular time at a particular geographical location. For example, uh, Makkah, he was in Arabia, he had an uh, Arabic culture and he was 1400 years ago. The times have changed, the location has changed, so we cannot follow the messenger. However, the message quran hakim is the same. That is their whole argument. The problem with this argument is, firstly, firstly, if, if you want to just break down this argument in the beginning, is that, okay, if we take your argument as uh, uh, the letter is important, what is written in the letter given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is quran hakim only this is important and we must read each and every verse each and every line and follow it even if you believe that then the verses of the Quran verses of this letter tells you to follow messenger 
the first step where this argument breaks is that if if you are saying that the only the letter is important then okay it says in the letter follow prophet muhammad peace be upon him there are uh, tens and 20 uh, a lot of verses in quran e hakim which mention it in clear way وَمَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهَ For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran e Hakim, وَمَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهَ Whoever obeyed, followed the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the one who followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are a lot of verses as well. For example, the verse which we started with, أَنَّبِيُّ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prior to believers than their own selves. and uh, m- many other verses which tell uh, the prophet muhammad peace be upon him o prophet muhammad peace be upon him we have sent you to mankind in order so that you can teach them what we have revealed that means that it is not similar to a postman just delivering our letter and going away it is a duty of prophet of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give that letter to explain that letter and to live a whole life according to that letter quran e hakim so that they can follow you so that they can follow you this is the first line uh, where that argument breaks and the second point is that it also depends on the message if it is a message which does not need a lot of explaining a lot of uh, uh, practical example and you can understand that letter on your own then maybe it it might have been enough for us to just collect the letter and read it and understand it on our own but the message is very wide it is very complex it is very deep the message allah subhanahu wa taala wants for the humanity is how to live your life successful life allah subhanahu wa taala wants the human beings to pass the test of this world allah subhanahu wa taala wants human being when when they they come to hereafter when they will die and they will be resurrected again and when they will be asked questions in the day of judgment they would succeed there allah subhanahu wa taala wants wants all of human beings to go to paradise and be saved from hell fire so it is a message that is encompassing a very complex variety of human beings you have intellectual human beings you have artistic human beings you have poetic human beings you have human beings of a very uh, hard physical strength and you have women you have children you have old people you have people of different cultures different languages for all of them there is one message there is one quran so the message is very deep very complicated so allah subhanahu wa taala has done us a, a big favor by selecting a human being a perfect human being so that it is not it does not rely on our own understanding but we have a whole practical example through which we can check our understanding if our understanding of quran e hakim is according to life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him then it is a correct understanding and if uh, if our understanding is not according to the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him that means we misunderstood the message you see the problem here is that allah subhanahu wa taala when he sent the message there is a possibility that we misunderstand it we don't understand it properly and this happens uh, a lot of the times with a lot of the books we we see that people read books and they and they completely misunderstand it allah subhanahu wa taala had not taken that chance that he would give us the quran and would rely on our skewed understanding our limited understanding to to understand the word of god but allah subhanahu wa taala has sent a human being who lived the life of quran e hakim for us to know that when we are mistaken in our understanding of quran e hakim and when we are not so this is a second very important purpose of why we have to learn about prophet muhammad peace be upon him and his life so the first point that we learned why should we study the seerah uh, the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him the first point is because it is it is imperative necessary for us to love prophet muhammad peace be upon him 
and you cannot love prophet muhammad peace be upon him you cannot love anyone who is far from you whom you cannot meet whom you cannot talk and if you if you are asked to love him of course you will have to uh, read about him you will have to learn about his life so th therefore we are uh, learning about his life in these lectures in seerah of prophet muhammad peace be upon him this is the first reason why we learned seerah so that we would be closer and we would love prophet muhammad peace be upon him and second reason why we learn about life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and why we learn seerah is so that we can understand quran quran e hakim was revealed to a human being and allah subhanahu wa taala selected that human being so that he can teach us the meanings of the message of allah meanings of quran e hakim therefore we learn about the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and thirdly we can say that seera of prophet muhammad peace be upon him will uh, will help you understand the events that are mentioned in quran e hakim for example quran e hakim in surah al anfal uh, comments about battle of badr in surah anfal allah subhanahu uh, allah subhanahu wa taala revealed this surah after uh, prophet muhammad peace be upon him and companions of prophet muhammad peace be upon him came back to madina from ghazwa e badr from the battle of badr and then the surah anfal was revealed if today someone who does not know about life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him who does not know what is uh, what is uh, battle of badr what happened in it why was uh, this battle fought and what was the uh, result of it and if he read surah al anfal he would understand the general concepts that are mentioned in surah anfal but he will not really understand the deeper meanings allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, uh, giving muslims guidance uh, as uh, f uh, regarding the situation they faced in that battle if we do not know the situation they failed in this battle uh, that's the, the muslims faced in this battle we would not really understand the guidance about it however now this is a miracle of quran e hakim that the words that allah subhanahu wa taala uses to give guidance even about a particular thing the words that allah subhanahu wa taala uses are general words and even someone who does not know about battle of badr or the life of the prophet peace be upon him would get some idea about the principles of a good human being that allah wanted about the uh, about the basic principles that allah subhanahu wa taala wants human beings to live their life according to however learning about the seerah of the prophet peace be upon him will help us understand the uh, deeper meanings of the quran and will help us understand uh, 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 to have a fuller picture of quran e hakim a very interesting example and we will inshallah end our today's session with this example there is a verse in surah tauba allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned uh, one event and in very general terms and if someone does not know that particular time period of the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him he would not really understand the essence of this verse and the real guidance that is in it first i will tell you the general uh, meaning of the verse allah subhanahu wa taala says in the verse which goes like this that o oh, you who believe if you will not help the prophet muhammad peace be upon him allah subhanahu wa taala is enough to uh, to help uh, his prophet against his enemies and allah subhanahu wa taala helped uh, his prophet when the disbelievers uh, has uh, throw has forced him out and the prophet uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, one of the two in the cave when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to his companion do not worry allah subhanahu wa taala is with us now this is the verse of surah tauba and if you do not know uh, which which is this event when the disbelievers forced prophet muhammad out and prophet muhammad is alone with only one companion in a cave 
and what is the situation that Allah subhanahu wa, uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying to his telling his companion don't worry Allah is with us even if you don't know the real event the actual event you would understand you would get a gist of it where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his messenger but you will not understand the deeper meaning the real event uh, inshallah we will learn in detail uh, when we will uh, uh, we will uh, carry on with the sira in detail but uh, right now i will just give you a slight idea of what actually was happening uh, on which the event on which this verse is a comment rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in makkah and his believers were in makkah but the disbelievers the enemies made their life very difficult so prophet muhammad peace be upon him allowed the believers to Uh, leave Makkah and go to Medina, and finally Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, uh, gave orders to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that you should leave as well. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him selected Hazrat Abu Bakr as Siddiq radhiyallahu taala an to go with him. Now there were only two of them, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and Abu Bakr as Siddiq radhiyallahu taala an. However, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew that when he and Abu Bakr radhiyallahu taala an will leave Mecca towards Medina, the disbelievers, the enemies, will search for them and will try to kill them. So, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, went to other way. Uh, if you leave Mecca, if you go north, you reach to Medina. But Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to south and went to one of the caves, Ghar uh, Sor, cave of Sor. and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an went to that cave in hiding for 3 days so that the disbelievers would uh, would search for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but would not find him in the way in medina in makka nowhere so they would be tired and they would stop searching then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an would uh, would leave the cave and would go to medina this was the plan however when sallallahu uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an were in the cave the enemies found uh, a way to uh, to find prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through his footsteps and the enemies the disbelievers came searching for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they came to uh, 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 and they came to the mouth of the cave sor Now the situation is Abu Bakr as Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are lying down hiding in the cave the disbelievers have reached that the face of the cave and there are a lot of caves in that mountain and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an could see the the uh, the legs and the feet of the enemy Abu Bakr as Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an was was afraid for the life of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was thinking that uh, uh, they have caught us and if they look down if they look below in the cave they will find us and they will kill uh, they will uh, murder prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was really worried in his heart how co- how uh, can i save prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now allah subhanahu wa taala commented about this situation what actually then happened was a spider came and uh, covered with his web the face of the cave sor so the disbelievers when they reached the face of the cave sor they saw the the web of the spider and there were other caves as well and all of the caves were looking very old and there were spider webs everywhere on the face so they thought that nobody would go in the cave because if someone would go in the cave there uh, would be no web so they returned they did not look down in the face of the cave hazrat abu bakar siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an was was very really afraid when he saw the enemy and their legs and the hazrat abu bakar siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an said to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh prophet they would find us if they if they only look down prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la tahzan inna allah ma'ana o oh, abu bakar don't worry don't be grieved allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously with only a a web 
of a small spider saved his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from an impending death this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse o you who believe if you do if you do not protect help prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need you allah is enough alone to save his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he did when the disbelievers forced prophet muhammad out of makkah he was only in the cave with only one companion and he said to his companion don't worry don't be grieved allah is with us you see if you know the background of uh, of the verse if you know uh, the event over that this verse is a comment a guidance by allah subhanahu wa taala you would understand the deeper meaning of the verse the deeper meaning of this verse is that allah subhanahu wa taala is all encompassing his in his powers he can save anyone which he, uh, anyone would he uh, he wants with only a small spider web or even uh, with only wind or with ants and there are millions of soldiers of allah subhanahu wa taala allah does not need us human beings to protect prophet muhammad to protect quran to protect islam allah subhanahu wa taala is enough to do that the reason that allah asked believers to to work for islam to work for the protection of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and quran and islam is so that allah can reward the believers for their efforts allah does not need their help to protect islam allah can do that on his own islam does not need anybody's help but if we work for islam it is for our own benefit secondly the deeper meaning in this verse is that the perseverance of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the belief in allah the tawakkul of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the reliance of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on allah subhanahu wa taala when abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala an saw the legs and the presence of enemy he was worried but when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw them he was not worried he was relieved he know that allah is with us he would protect us in miraculous way this is the deeper meaning of the word so i have mentioned just one example of how knowing the seera knowing the life of the prophet helps us understand the quran e hakim better today we have seen the there are uh, many reasons for learning seera and life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him it is to love prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is to understand quran e hakim the message of allah subhanahu wa taala by knowing the messenger and it is uh, so that we can understand the events that are mentioned in the quran we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to uh, help us uh, persevere in these sessions Uh, so that we can continue this series throughout ramazan and uh, we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to bless us in our efforts and to accept us and to reward us uh, as it is a blessed month of ramadan and allah subhanahu wa taala rewards multiple times for all deeds and we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to instill in our hearts the love of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we co- we can be closer to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we could complete our iman and we would follow the footsteps of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum